Welcome to the 14th season of the Nitwits, a weekly roundtable discussion on the Penn State Nittany Lions. Our panel includes Neil Riddell of the Altoona Mirror, Mark Brennan of FightOnState.com, 1966 team captain Mike Irwin, and Casey Kantz of WTAJ Sports. The Nitwits are brought to you by Irwin Financial, a firm foundation for your financial future. Coldwell Banker, no one will work harder to sell your home. By Doctors Howells and Reed, orthodontics for children and adults. By the bookstore in the Park Hills Plaza, featuring the area's most complete selection of books, DVDs, and magazines. By Fiori True Value on 6th Avenue, Altoona. Just ask rental. By Pacifico's Bakery, genuine Italian bread and rolls for your tailgating needs. By the Altoona Professional Hearing Aid Center, your hearing aid healthcare professional. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your cleaning needs. Your rehab choice, Help South Altoona. Ask for us by name. By JP Auto. Home of the $1,000 push, pull, or tow. By Courtesy Motors of Altoona, where courtesy means a great deal. By the Allegro, where fine cuisine is a way of life. By the easy-to-use Big Book. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State Game Day every Friday. You can also see the nitwits on AltoonaMirror.com. All righty, welcome to another edition of the Nitwits. The gang is all here. Mark Brennan, Neil Riddell, Mike Irwin join me every each and every week. Penn State wraps up non-conference play with a 34-6 win over Eastern Michigan. And guys, both Rob Bolden and Matt McGloin make the starting QB situation, I guess, that much more difficult. In a good way, though. Both played very well, especially McGloin, who threw for three touchdowns. Uh, does this platoon formula continue into Big Ten play next week, Mark? You know, going into the Temple game, I thought it was a great opportunity. Penn State had a, a, a you know Temple, Eastern Michigan, uh, for Bolden to really step up and grab the job, and really he he hasn't done it. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, the last couple games, McGloin has played much better, and uh, I, I think it's time he gets a shot as the starting QB. I know there's an argument to be made that he's really good at coming off the bench. But, you know, you look at his numbers across the board, they're much better than Bolden's. And I think it's time that he got a shot. Bolden was given the opportunity as a starter. I think now, now McGloin ought to get the opportunity. Yep. It's very interesting because the best teams that McGloin has played when he's been the starter, Michigan State, Florida, um, you, you look back and he hasn't done that well as yep. a starter. But he's come in and had a lot of success, whether it's Northwestern, Minnesota, he played well. You know, and now the trio this year. So I don't know whether if he doesn't play well, what happens? Whether Bolden can rescue you like McGloin has played terrific in a reserve role. And I don't know. Do you want to tamper with that, uh, particularly one more week against what should be a beatable opponent? It, it's a real dilemma. Um, some of the kids said that some of the false start penalties that they couldn't hear that well, and I think that speaks to some of Bolden's take charges at the line, Mike. Well, I feel like they got to keep it the way it is right now. And I agree with Mark that I think McGloin played much better on Saturday. But I've been in the, the Bolden camp a long time because I think I get nightmares thinking about that Florida <laughs> game and last year's Ohio State game where the gunslinger comes out and starts throwing the ball under pressure. Now, but McGloin clearly stepped up on Saturday and looked good. I mean, and, and I agree, Bolden got down close and they had the uh, – you know, somebody jumped off sides when they were going to score the first series. And the idea of going to be out two or three series then be out of there, I'm not sure how comfortable you can get down there. But I don't think you should change it now. I think it's polarizing to the team if you have to pick one or the other. I mean, if they pick McGloin, you're going to have a lot of people upset that Bolden's not playing and vice versa. So I think they've got to stick with what they're doing right now and go with that for a while. But in the long run, I'm not sure it's going to work. I just like to see I just like to see McGloin get the opportunity to start a game. I'm not saying necessarily make him the man, but let's see if you can get a guy in there who's going to take the team from the start of a game. Because yeah, you're right. Okay, maybe it's not going to make a big difference against Eastern Michigan or, or Indiana, which appears to be struggling. But you're not going to be able to afford to spot people a lead or to play yeah. poorly in the first quarter. And that's that's what it is for me. Listen, I'm waffling. I went into the season saying it, it should be Bolden because I thought he had the greater upside. I just haven't seen it on the field. That's yeah. a great point. Uh, 
maybe have McGoin start against a team like Indiana where, you, where, where it's a team you should beat. Right, but then you start to turn things up. You know, hey, I, I don't know that there's an easy answer to this. And the other thing is, you know, McGloin has proven against the lesser competition that he's pretty good. But you're trying to measure yourself against the Alabamas and the Ohio States and the Nebraska. Um, I just think Bolden hasn't really shown a lot of market improvement. His touch still, he, uh, you know, the ball he threw over the middle to Davon Smith in the first half, he rifled it right into coverage, and they were fortunate it was an incompletion in and not completing that drive. And it just doesn't look like he's nearly as confident as McGloin. Mike, you're, you said you're in Bolden's camp, and we're watching video, Rob, right now. Uh, what things, uh, Neil just mentioned the touch on the football. What, what well, I, I think they, I mean, they definitely ought to work with Bolden on some of those, like the screen passes where he, oh, I mean, I'm not sure what the quarterback coaches are doing with them. But, I mean, he definitely has a stronger arm. I think you can see the field better. He's a little taller. And I think McGloin, we know we're going to get with McGloin. Yeah. I mean, he played very well. And, and I think if Bolden gets the right breaks at the beginning of that game, it might turn it around. McGloin comes in in a good situation. They're on the 40-yard line and, you know, much better field position than they had before. And, and, and I give him credit. He threw well. But I think they'd ruin the team by starting McGloin now. I, I think you got to keep both those kids playing. And I think they're – are satisfied with their roles right now as McGloin satisfied. Being He's not back. satisfied with his role. I mean, he said right. that he yeah. would like to be the starter. I mean, now, that said, we mentioned it last week, and these guys are both handling this, you know, extremely well. The body language on the sideline, I mean, both guys congratulating the other. I think that's really good to see, and I don't know that you lose that uh, if you start McGloin. I just, if you look at the numbers, they are so drastically different in terms of pass efficiency, completion percentage, that sort of thing. I just, you know, again, I was a Bolden guy to start the season. They've and I given just, Bolden every opportunity. Yeah. Well, to, no, I, to see, I up. think that the, the substitution, I mean, if he knows you're going to be in there two or three series and out, you know, how much confidence you're going to have. And what you make it happen. You've okay. got to make a big play while you're in there or you're out. You know, and you I, know what like, makes me laugh, though, and we sat here for years and said, why is the position so sacred that you can only play one guy? You right. have two guys who you have confidence and you think can play. Why not play two? Now that they're playing two, people scream for them. I'm, not, play I'm actually not anything. screaming. I think they. I, I'm not saying they should just settle on one right now because I don't think any anyone's differentiated it themselves. If I can spin it out to that degree, I'm just saying I think McGloin gets should have the opportunity to get in there and see how he does as a well, starter. Well, I mean, if you're comparing games, go back. I mean, Alabama game, Bolden plays better yesterday. Yeah. McGloin yeah. plays better. So I don't know. You keep flip flopping over four around. games, though, Mike. But, but look at the stats. It's it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Is, the team is three and one with what they're doing. The only loss is to Alabama, which, you know, they're blowing everybody out that they're playing. They beat Arkansas big over the weekend. So I don't know how you can judge it. And I, what scares me is going into those last four or five games sure. of the year with the, the gunslinger in there. I'm not sure what's going to happen. I mean, I well, saw him implode before. So. Well, you did, but should he get another opportunity, and will he be better from having played against Florida and Alabama, and what's he going to do when he responds? And, you know, what does he have to do to get more of a shot? And, and I think that's a fair question. I'm going to make a prediction, guys. We've talked about it for four weeks now, and I think we're going to keep talking about it in weeks to come. Quarterback situation, hot topic each and every week. Uh, coming up, though, yesterday's win came at a huge price. A couple big injuries to tell you about. Stay with us. The Nitwits are brought to you by Irwin Financial, a firm foundation for your financial future. Coldwell Banker, no one will work harder to sell your home. By Drs. Howells and Reed, orthodontics for children and adults. By the bookstore in the Park Hills Plaza, featuring the area's most complete selection of books, DVDs, and magazines. By Fiori True Value on 6th Avenue, Altoona. Just ask rental. Hi, I'm Joey Sue, and you're watching the Networks. Welcome back to the show. Penn State's escaped the first three weeks without any big injuries. That guy's not the case on Saturday, though. Uh, they lost two of their best defensive players, their top linebacker, Michael Motti. Going down in the first quarter with an ACL injury to his left knee, Joe Paterno said Motti likely done for the year. Uh, and then a real scary situation. Senior cornerback Danton Lynn goes down, left in the third quarter in what was just very, very tough to watch, immobilized by a cart after a collision. Uh, but he apparently did have movement in his extremities. Either way, it's a tough situation for both guys. 
uh, Mark, especially Monty. Yeah, I mean, going into a game like that where you think Penn State's probably going to win uh, easily, the one thing you hope doesn't happen are, are serious injuries. And for a guy like Monty, boy, your heart just goes out to him because he came back from one ACL. You know, he was looking to me just like he was going to be unbelievable and you wonder how much this sets him back he has another year of eligibility left but we know how long the rehab takes uh, and really my heart just goes out to him Danton Lynn you know if, if we never have to see another cart taking a player off the field I, I, I would be happy fortunately it sounds like he's going to be okay you know the one thing I would point out and, and Tom Bradley mentioned it afterward these kids have to stop leading with their helmets you, you just have to stop doing it because not only could you hurt the, the opponent you could also hurt yourself yeah, Bradley said his head was down. It is important. When Talaferro was injured, his yeah. head was down. Yeah, even down to the junior high level, mm -hmm. tackle with your head up. Uh, Bradley, I, I'm glad he made that that, that point. Um, you know, I think Marty was really the second best player on the defense, maybe behind Still. Absolutely. And, um, you know, I think that's also going to affect how they play offense. You can't, you know, when you, these are two of their top five defensive players. And I think to really uh, uh, expect the offense, you know, to to play with one hand behind its back when you have you're losing defensive players, you're going to have to be even more aggressive on offense. Yeah, Mike outside. How, how do you come up with the second best player after Still? Who made this decision now? <laughs> well, it's I a, mean, all of a sudden he has Still it's it's an as opinion the show. He was going to quote the quote. Marty was a legitimate All-American candidate. I mean, yeah, well, yeah, I, I so said, is Still, yeah. but I think. Probably both number well, one. You're the guy that single handedly motivated <laughs> still all last year. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm glad something motivated him. If, if I had any help, I'm glad that I was. I think he's playing help. great. Uh, he is playing great, no question about it. It's, you know, still has been resurrected. It's almost like last year he was playing Huggy Bear, you know, most of the time. But I think he's really going after him this year, and I'm glad to see that. But going back to Marty losing that, you know, probably, I mean, I really feel bad for the kid because, I mean, it was a breakout year for him, and I think. He'd have done well. I guess looking on the flip side, fortunately we have other linebackers there, like Stupar got a chance and played yeah, real well. And, uh, Harry Fort. Harry Fort and some of those yeah. guys are playing well. So. It's going to be interesting to see what they do at, at cornerback because they brought in the freshman kid Amos, uh, even though on the other side you had Powell and Morris kind of sharing that other position. Tom Bradley said that Chas Powell is dealing with a shoulder injury, he that he has to wear some sort of harness, and it, they're reluctant to play him on that short side of the field. So Amos is a big uh, – Morris is a, a smaller kid too. Uh, Amos is, you know, six foot two oh five, a big kid, but that's a tough spot for true freshmen. I mean, uh, Lynn went through some growing pains a few years ago when he played as a true freshman. So this is going to be it's going to be interesting to see what they decide to do at that spot. They released Lynn from the hospital last night, yeah. so we made it. We don't know now, but I mean, you think he would miss probably at least uh, one game. Yeah, I just, you know, just hey, thankfully, yeah. you, that, all of that to me is unimportant when you see him going off. Yeah, hopefully you get him back in a week or two. But the key is that his arms and legs are moving, and it seems like he's healthy. And you know, thank goodness. What did you? Yeah. Some of those kids that came in yesterday, we saw some good stuff from Stu Parr, some good stuff from Fort. Um, did you like what you what you saw in, in a result? Yeah, I, I did. I mean, Stu Parr's a, been a leader and, and a quality guy, player, yeah. and hadn't you know? I mean, had really kind of been displaced this year when they moved Carson uh, inside. So I think that was one. Uh, positive. I like what we saw on the other side of the ball out of Dukes. I yeah, mean, he's a yeah. bruising runner, and I thought he showed some. Yeah, problems. Joe said he's got to get better on that pass blocking, though, and that's the one thing that's that's kind of held him out. But he could be a real plus for them. For them, uh, we're not sure how long Beecham's going to be out with that foot injury, and Stephon Green. I, you know, a blown opportunity for Stephon Green because th he could have been doing some good things in these last couple games, but he was on the sideline in street clothes. We don't know when he's coming back, so this is a great chance for Curtis Dukes to step up and do some things, and he did running the ball yet uh, on uh, Saturday. Did Joe say that, that Green's going to miss two, the next two weeks that we know? Yeah, I mean, you we know, know. Yeah, he, he alluded to that, but with Joe, you just absolutely never know where. Okay. A week ago, he had Drake probably out for the year, yeah. and now he's back and made oh, a yeah. contribution yesterday. Well, Joe's uh, going to be a topic of ours in the next segment. He was on the sideline for the first time this season yesterday. Guys, it's kind of nice to have a head coach on the sideline for a change, isn't it? Seemed to make a difference yesterday, too. We're back after this. The Nitwits are brought to you by, by Pacifico's Bakery, genuine Italian bread and rolls for your tailgating needs. By the Altoona Professional Hearing Aid Center, 
your hearing aid health care professional. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your cleaning needs. Now back to Nitwits. A roundtable look at Nittany Lion football. Welcome back to the show, guys. We saw a sight we haven't seen yet this year. That is Joe Paterno roaming the sidelines. He went back up to the press box for the second half, but uh, didn't seem to be as much confusion yesterday with Joe back on the sidelines, Mark. Well, it, it's a, it, from a non-health perspective, it's good to see him down there. He's definitely, he knows how to work the sideline. It's good yeah. to see him interacting with players and whatnot, but... Boy, I still think that's just way too dangerous for him to be down there. He admitted that for the last four or five minutes of the first half, he could barely move. And if you saw him down there kind of hunched over yeah. on his knees, uh, I know what he's trying to do. I get what he's trying to do, but I just don't think it makes any sense for him to be down there until he's able to move uh, a little bit more easily. Yeah, and he admitted that afterwards. <clears throat> now, you do wonder for standing up like that for an hour and a half uh, or more during the pregame also, how much that may set him back for this week and beyond. Yeah. I, I just wonder, you know, with Joe being down there, there are a lot of other people on the offensive side of the ball. They're all up in the booth, and I just wonder why one of those guys wouldn't get down when Joe's not going to be there, like a Galen Hall or a Dick Anderson or someone just to be there to have the representative on the offensive side of the ball. I guess McCleary is there, but he's relaying messages from upstairs the whole time. So it seems like it's very confusing when Joe's not there. Does that make it more confusing, Mark, if you well, do something like that? he was asked, I mean, Joe was asked specifically, you know, why not send another coach down? And he mentioned that they had thought about sending Jay down, mm -hmm. uh, but they thought that then, you know, in a couple weeks when Joe's back on the sideline full time that they would have to send Jay back up. I, I don't, why is that so confusing? Why would that be so difficult to do? They, they've never been a staff that has adjusted you know, well. <laughs> uh, just done a lot of movement with your, you know, Galen, when he first was hired, <clears throat> was on the field for the first few games and then okay. went upstairs halfway through the season, I think 03 or 04, and that was a radical move for, for I think it was the first time that an assistant changed roles, you know, during yes, his friend Gatter was on the sideline right. the, the, his entire career. Basically. Yeah, I think it ended a lot of confusion having somebody there that you know is in charge. I mean, although they did run into the same situations they ran into in previous games, where the timeouts weren't an issue and you know, you look at the special teams. I mean, we were having some problems. It looked like they finally got the special teams in order. I mean, the kickers were in there, and I thought Farron did an outstanding job, both punting in and his field goal. And uh, yeah, it was good to see Fick and make the field goal. Willis blocked the punt. Their special teams in improved dramatically in one well, way. There was only really one way to go after <laughs> Temple, but all credit to the special teams. And Farah, you know, he's had some issues off the field things, and it was nice to see him step up and put that behind him. I mean, clearly that kid is a talent. Yeah. Uh, able to kick off, punt, and, and make a field goal. Uh, really helped to stabilize things. Uh, hopefully we'll see him get a little bit more out of that punt return game and the kickoff return game as the season goes along. But in terms of kicking, dramatic improvement over the Yeah, their week. coverage has been good. Credit to the special Teams coach. Yeah, there you, there you go. There you go. But even the kickoffs, like picking the, uh, kicking them into the end zone or fair kicking into the end zone, I should say. But they're getting deeper kicks now, and it looks like they're getting that part together. It's a good thing you got some Eastern Michigans on the schedule, time to get it together. So I think. It's all plus from here on in going forward. One quick note, your heart goes out to Evan Lewis because he was given an opportunity. It didn't work out for him. This kid has done everything he could do for the team, playing on both sides of the ball. Mm -hmm. uh, and to see, you know, they, they made him back into a holder now and, you know, kind of a backup. And to see him on the bench, he looked kind of dejected. Hopefully his spirits get up because, you know, what I think everybody realized that he gave it his best shot and it just didn't work out for him. Exactly right, guys. Big Ten play begins next weekend, Penn State. Heads to Indiana. Our predictions are next. Stay with us. The Nitwits are brought to you by by j and Auto, home of the $1,000 push, pull, or tow. By Courtesy Motors of Altoona, where courtesy means a great deal. By the Allegro, where fine cuisine is a way of life. By the easy-to-use Big Book. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State game day every Friday. Hey, I'm Penn State wide receiver Derek Moore, and you're watching the Nitwits. Thank you, Derek. The 3-1 Penn State Indy Lions now set to head to Bloomington to take on Indiana next Saturday at noon, guys. And Mark has uh, broken through the wind column. We've stopped the bleeding of Casey coming out. Nitwit of the week, three weeks in a row. 
Congratulations, Brent. Thank you. I'm just trying to represent this side. We're <laughs> looking to pitch a shutout this year. Hopefully we can, led by Casey. You know, uh, Indiana coming off a loss to North Texas. Ouch. Yeah. Uh, that's tough. Uh, you know, the Hoosiers have a decent offense, uh, but I, I think Penn State's going to win this rather handily. I'm going to pick a 27 uh, to 13, and I wanted to offer Mike the use of this uh, calculator to make. Do you need it, Mike, to make your I pick? Just because the ball bounced your way. For <laughs> day, but if, if Ron English doesn't go for the field goal and tries to score, I think what was Neil, up with that? He Neil and I are the one. I went to English before the game yeah. and said, I need this to be 30 or less. I mean, Neil and I, otherwise we'd have had a ball. Neil and I would have had a ball with that. But the fact that they kicked it field goal took us out of there. But we had to, you know, and, and Penn State sat on it the whole fourth quarter. So they Absolutely. Really You're on a roll, Mike. Why don't you yeah. just work your way into your All right, I will because, <laughs> you know, I really I don't think Indiana is that good. Very, in fact, I don't think they're any good. They have one four-star recruit, I think, last year. So I'm looking for – we were talking about we don't know the point spread when we're filming this program. So I, I want to say – I'm going to go like 34 to 7. I'm going to say wow. oh, Mike going 27 high. points. Mike going 27 high. 27 points in case you're adding it. Yeah, I am adding it. Uh, <laughs> I am 0 for 4 uh, against the uh, spread so far this year. So I don't know. I hopefully I can keep that going. Um, I, You know, Indiana is the one team that has not beaten Penn State since they got into the Big Ten. Uh, that North Texas, that's a t really terrible loss for the whole league. Yeah. On the but road. Penn yeah. State, I don't think, has been a really great road team. So I'm going to say Penn State 28, Indiana 17. I'm going to try to keep this left side still over if we can. They trailed like 24 nothing at one point in that game yesterday in North Texas. I think Penn State goes down and gets a win in Bloomington. Not as convincing maybe as uh, Mike picked, but I go 23-10 and prove to 4-1 heading into that big uh, Week 6 matchup with Iowa. So, uh should be a good game. I like uh, our, everybody's position. Mike's <laughs> <laughs> high and I'm low. Yep. You got to take a chance, though. Yeah. You got to get, you got to. And gotta the winning offer. side is right in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I don't see where you're coming up with 17 points against our defense. Oh, come on. Well, you know, Mike, that's why they, they scored 17 points all year. As Joe says, Indiana. that's why they <laughs> play. That's why you're a news reporter. Right? Yeah, well, why don't you wave your you're pen around for a while? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, the next week here. we'll, of course, break down and see if this side goes to 5-0 and or if this side goes gets their first, uh, I guess, ball of the year, too. So we'll check that out. We'll talk to you next after the Indiana game next week. We're out of time on this edition of the Nitwits. Talk to you next week. Good night. are brought to you by Irwin Financial, a firm foundation for your financial future. Coldwell Banker, no one will work harder to sell your home. By Drs. Howells and Reed, orthodontics for children and adults. By the bookstore in the Park Hills Plaza, featuring the area's most complete selection of books, DVDs, and magazines. By Fiore True Value on 6th Avenue, Altoona. Just ask rental. By Pacifico's Bakery, genuine Italian bread and rolls for your tailgating needs. By the Altoona Professional Hearing Aid Center, your hearing aid healthcare professional. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your cleaning needs. Your rehab choice, Health South Altoona. Ask for us by name. By JMP Auto. Home of the $1,000 push, pull, or tow. By Courtesy Motors of Altoona, where courtesy means a great deal. By the Allegro, where fine cuisine is a way of life. By the easy-to-use Big Book. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State Game Day every Friday. You can also see the nitwits on AltoonaMirror.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.